If you're new to this video series, let me catch you up on something. I built these darn stairs wrong the first time. Each step is an eighth of an inch taller than the building code allows. Now my excuse is that I think the code has changed since the last time I built a full flight of stairs in an inspected job, but whatever the excuse is, we caught the mistake the day after I built them and it was a painfully embarrassing moment as you might guess. But the time has finally come to yank these things out and do it right and I am ready. The heart of this repair consists of moving the header back six inches. I have no idea how I got it wrong when I was building the floor system the first time, but it doesn't matter now. This six inches will now be spread out over the entire run of the stairs, and it will enable me to allow for one more rise. Well, we're back to square one here. The stairs are torn out. I've got new material on site. I have verified the code exactly, and I am not going to try to build these things with the microphone on. What I am going to do is I've picked the best board that I have. It's straightest, it's uh, fewest knots. I'm going to carefully lay out the new rise and run, which is scrupulously code compliant. In fact, well within the code. I've been able to do that this time because with the head moved back, I've got room to put another tread, another rise in this stair system, which makes it easy to make these stairs not only compliant, but more walkable. So I'm gonna get rid of this thing, I'm gonna get the old skill saw going, and we're gonna make a set of stairs that I will not, hopefully, have to apologize for to anybody. Before I dig into this, I wanna just put out there that there's some additional trickiness that I'm probably not gonna talk about in this video about matching the first stair height to the last stair height now that we're using hardwood floor, hardwood treads, and carpeted at the landing. I'll be talking about that later. So for right now, it's time for me to sort of take off the microphone, get my head into the game for the last time, and get a set of stairs built. Total rise is 121 and 7 eighths inches. Converted to decimals is 121.875 divided by 16 rises is 7.61 inches, converted to fractions is 7 and 5 eighths, weak. That means I'm gonna lay out 16 rises on this set of stairs, 7 and 5 eighths each. That's the baseline. The code max is eight inches, so we're very comfy there. The run. The total run that we've decided to use is 144 and 3 eighths, roughly. Converted to decimals is 144.375. Divided by 15 treads, because there's one less tread than there is total risers, equals 9.625 inches per tread, which converts to 9 and 5 eighths inches which means we have 15 runs, treads, at 9 and 5 eighths inches. The minimum is 9. So we're well within the minimum tread length. We exceed the minimum tread length, and we are well underneath the maximum rise height. So we're not going to have that problem. 7 and 5 eighths by 9 and 5 eighths. Rock and roll.
Now there are a lot of ways to mess up when you're making stairs. And perhaps one of the easiest ways happens when you're measuring out and marking your stringer, which will act as a pattern. For instance, a small change or mistake in the tread length is not a big deal if you've got a little extra distance to play with where the stairs land that can accommodate the growth or the shrinkage. But a small discrepancy in the height or the rise of each step multiplied over a long set of stairs can add up to a mistake that's just not acceptable. You could end up either with uneven rises outside of code compliance or treads that are not level because the rise was not right. An accumulating error can add up to cause a real problem. Now if you're carpeting the stairs, you can get away with just a little more variation between steps. But since these are wood, and since they have turned into a bit of a sore spot for me in our video series, I'm willing to take the extra time and materials for that matter, if I need them, to make these stairs as close to perfect as I can get them. Get it. This 2x4 on the wall here is acting as a spacer. It will allow both the half inch drywall and a three quarter inch skirt board to slide in between the stringer and the wall. That way I can simply butt the hardwood faces or rises and treads to the skirt board and avoid having to notch and fit at each stair. Now on the other set that I just tore out, we did this with a 1x4 because at that time we were planning on carpeting the stairs and the only thing that would be sliding into this space would have been the drywall. I like to use a couple of joist hangers at the head of the stairs. I only install them on the inside stringers because the two at the side walls are nailed to every single stud and are in fact locking the entire flight in like the doors on Fort Knox. Having said that, I also put a sleeper at the foot of the stair, notch the two inside stringers around it, and then throw in a couple of Simpson A35s. Bulletproof.
I'm gluing and nailing these treads in place here. But I'm not nailing them down super hard and I'm not screwing them in at all yet. With a screw it would be easy to push one end or the other down maybe too hard and create a situation where the tread is no longer exactly flat. I still want screws in this because if you remember screws and glue are one good way to prevent a floor or a stair from squeaking. So in order to ensure that the steps remain flat and level during installation, I will put the screws in a little later. So I've let a couple days go by since you saw me put these in place and throw the nail in with the glue so that by the time I come back to screw it down today the glue is good and hard and doing its job. This way the screws are locking everything down in place without compressing the glue or changing the height or the flatness of the tread if there is perhaps one uneven cut. I'm using a 3 inch deck screw the same ones that we use to hold down all the subfloor on the whole house. If you remember back earlier in our series, nails are much more likely to squeak in a floor system than screws, and we can all agree that a squeaky step, while not uncommon, is still an annoyance. Yes. I appreciate it when you leave comments or give the videos a thumbs up. This tells YouTube that you like our content and they will help continue to put it in front of other ambitious people like yourself. Thank you for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.